Welcome back. We're going to talk about the Montreal Canadiens. And of course, uh, if you're a Canadiens fan, it's not necessarily the greatest time while well, losing four out of your last five games. Uh, worst time to be in a skid, especially with the playoffs coming a week from tonight. So, uh, gentlemen, uh, considering where Montreal is, can they get back to their winning ways and be successful in the playoffs? Or is this going to prolong them and have a short season? Um, I'm hoping they can get back. I don't know if they'll be able to. They do have a very young team. So a lot of the guys at like Gallagher has probably performed better than a lot of people thought he would. I didn't even think Galchenyuk was going to make the team, and those guys have been key. So um, especially not having that much playoff experience, I don't know. I don't know if they're going to be able to turn it around in time, and I don't think they will. <laughs> you know what? It's going to call upon their leaders. Uh, you're not going to look at the Gallaghers and those kind of guys as step up. But you're going to look at like Suppressed, who's gone down that playoff road before. Uh, Gianta. And Gianta is another cup. one. And then even P.K. and Subban, who, who is uh, P.K. is he's a younger guy. But he's really a leader on that team. And he's a vocal guy in that dressing room. So it'll be interesting to see how these guys step up. It's a really test of character right now for the Montreal Canadiens. Size is going to be an issue as well as Carey Price. Uh, he's been shaky at best. Carey Price, but he's, he's a good goaltender. He's a high you know, elite goaltender. And, I mean, every goaltender goes through a slump. His just happens to be at probably the worst time possible. So if Price can turn it around, then I'd have a little more faith. But I don't think Montreal's got a lot going for them right now. The thing working for Carey Price right now and also works against him is his ego. Uh, Carey Price has probably one of the biggest egos you'll see in the goalie in the NHL. So that could work benefit for him for playoffs because, you know what, he likes the spotlight. He wants to be in that spotlight. He wants to be the guy. Well, here's his chance, Carey. Don't blow it. Uh, Major League Baseball, uh, so far three weeks in, we had some teams that have been surprises. Uh, New York Yankees seem to ride the ship uh, despite all those injuries. Uh, but who is your disappointment so far? Can there be a tie? I would say the Toronto Blue Jays and the Los Angeles Angels. Um, Blue Jays, I'm a big fan, so it hurts a little bit. I uh, thought high expectations. I mean, they were one of the top five, I think, for World Series or odds. Or the, yeah, it brought in all those names, Reyes and whatnot, and it's just tough to see them. I think they have, what, eight wins in the first yeah. 20 games, and like that's not what a, what a high-caliber team does. The same with the Angels. They, were the, I think, they had the best odds to going in. And you bring in Hamilton, you have Pujols from last year, Mike Trout won Rookie of the Year, and it seems like none of them are, like Trout's doing all right, but none of them seem to be really firing at the same time, and it's, it's tough. Even well, the L.A. Dodgers, too. I think a lot of people are expecting good things at L.A. Dodgers. They've struggled. But it's early, folks. It's, it's, it's not even May yet. It's still in April. We have, you know, how many more months of baseball left. So I, I don't think it's time to panic. It's disappointment right now in Toronto. Pitching looks a lot better in the last number of games. Hitting still isn't where it should be, but it, it's eventually going to come through for Toronto. And don't think the Angels are going to be down there in the cellar for much longer. Well, even but, last season they started slow and then yeah. came back up. So, Well, it's going to be interesting with those bats. I think Josh Hamilton has to be one of those reasons. Uh, was batting below 200. Went 4 for 4 with four singles yesterday. So that might be a positive sign for him. And I want to get to uh, a positive person. That's Phil Jackson, known as the Zen Master. And this guy, everywhere he's gone, he's won and done very well. Now there's speculation that the Cleveland Cavaliers are interested and wanting to bring Phil Jackson to the organization. And I know with LeBron James uh, having at least another year under his contract, might want to return, or the speculation he might want to return in, in a two seasons time, uh, might be a, a situation for Phil Jackson that turned out pretty good. They already got a good young team, but uh, do you see Phil Jackson being interested in the Cavaliers as much as the Cavs are interested in Phil? I would say it depends on what the Cavaliers are willing to offer Phil Jackson. I mean, Phil Jackson's coached 20 years. He's a team coached by him has never made, not made the playoffs. So is he really going to want to go to a young team? I mean, they've got a lot of players. Kyrie Irving is probably one of the best guards in the league, but they went 24 and 58 last year. Does he really want, he's already 67. Does he really want to go spend a couple years building up a team before he gets him back into the playoffs? He's won, what, 11 championships already? So unless they're willing to offer him everything he wants, I think because when the Lakers were talking to him before they brought in their new coach, it was he wanted ownership shares and a whole bunch of money. So and he's I'd not say, going back to L.A., no, let's but, be honest. But if they're all willing to offer him the same sort of package, I would say go for it if you can pad your retirement money. It would surprise me. He's kind of, I know he's not going to go back to the Lakers, but he's kind of an L.A. kind of guy. How does an L.A. guy that kind of lives that Hollywood life move to Cleveland? He went to Chicago. He lived yeah. in Chicago. Sh it's but cold some, in Chicago. But trust me, I've been to Cleveland. I've been to Chicago. There's a huge <laughs> difference between Cleveland and Chicago. And there's a, you, actually a universal difference between Cleveland and L.A. <laughs> um, unless they back up a truckload of cash for him, offer him everything, including maybe the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland, 
Yeah, I don't think he's going to go. Maybe LeBron returns because I know he doesn't want to be categorized as a bad guy. He's not going back to Cleveland. No. No. You never know. No, no. All right. We'll see what happens in a few years. Would you go back to Cleveland? <laughs> oh, I have a soft spot for Cleveland. <laughs> but that's just me. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not bitter about LeBron James either. Uh, I do want to get to the Toronto Raptors, however. Uh, this is another team that's kind of been struggling, uh, considering they've missed the playoffs for five years in a row. Um, during Brian Colangelo, the general manager's time there, he's been there for seven seasons. The first two were pretty good, won their first ever Atlantic title uh, under Colangelo, but since then they've really struggled, uh, really uh, bad, I wouldn't say bad trades, uh, but they're ones that make you scratch your head very much like uh, Brian Burke in the city of Toronto. Uh, does Brian Colangelo deserve another year to kind of ride the ship? Because he brought in Rudy Gay and, and is starting to look promising for the team. Or do you say, you know what, cut our ties and get rid of him? You know, when he came from Phoenix, they were thinking that this is the greatest move in the Raptor, Raptors history. And it really hasn't worked out. You know, is it time? Likely it is. I would say so. I mean, five years is a long time. I think in any sport, if you're in charge of a team for five years and you don't see, or five years without the playoffs and you don't see a lot of improvement, you should go. All right, guys, uh, stay here. I don't want you guys to go just yet. We've got Over Under coming up in just a bit.